Now to breaking news, as the number of coronavirus cases increases in our area, officials on Long Island are holding another press conference to update the public. Let's take a listen in. Three parts. We're first going to go over the numbers, the latest numbers that we have. We're going to go over some violations of price gouging that we found and penalties that have been given from the Office of Consumer Affairs. And then we're going to talk about the seniors. Now, this is really, really important. I'm just going to preview this by saying most people who come into contact with the virus who contract the virus will be fine, will be aid, have no symptoms or mild symptoms, but we have to protect our seniors. They're the ones who are most at, at risk. Those with compromised immune system and people who are not so young are the most at risk. And the whole point of what we're talking about, of containing as much as we can those people with positive with positive tests who are confirmed cases, containing them as much as we can, as we can, isolating them as much as we can to reduce community spread so we can keep our seniors safe. And we're going to talk about the measures that we're doing with the senior centers that we partner with and through our Office for the Aging, what we're doing to do that. Um, as of now, in Nassau County, we have 19 positive cases of COVID-19 coronavirus. We have 72 residents in mandatory quarantine, 74 in precautionary quarantine, and we currently at this time have 10 tests pending. Now, as has been reported, uh, two of those positive cases, two of those 19, are school bus drivers. Uh, these two school bus drivers, they both drive small buses. They transport between them approximately 80 students on uh, various, on several routes. Uh, most of the families of those students have been contacted by our Department of Health, and we're working on making sure we're contacting the rest of them. Um, the most important thing we're doing, which is why it's so important to contact the families, is to prevent further spread. And that's why our contact investigation and our team of disease investigators who go and do this work is so incredibly important. Um, there have been some school closings because of these school bus drivers testing positive. Um, and these are Oyster Bay, Locust Valley, Glen Cove, Westbury, and some private schools. Um, in uh, this Friends Academy in Locust Valley, uh, the Locust Valley, Portledge in Locust Valley, in Westbury, Millneck Manor is closed, in Glen Cove, Eastwood, that's East, uh, Glen Cove and Oyster Bay, Eastwood, and also Summit Lower School in Glen Cove and Oyster Bay. So uh, just wanted to give you those latest numbers, you know. We say it all the time, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, do the corona bump, uh, give the peace sign, however you want to greet people, but let's take a break from shaking hands for a while. Uh, so our Office of Consumer Affairs, led by Commissioner Greg May, has uh, three actions that they've taken since we announced our new email address, price gouging at NassauCountyNY.gov. The first is a pharmacy in Island Park was issued, uh, the Office of Consumer Affairs issued to them an unfair trade practice violation of $5,000 for selling N95 masks individually for about $5 each from open boxes of 20. And the individual, not, not only are they overpriced, the indi individual masks are not labeled for retail. So we're not even sure if they're safe to be sold in this way. A convenience store in Hicksville was issued an unfair trade practice violation, also $5,000 fine, for selling 20 count boxes of masks for 100 times what they bought them for. They bought them for 30 bucks, they're selling them for 60 bucks. Again, these boxes were not labeled for retail sale. So again, we don't know if that's the appropriate way to get to sell them. Um, and there was one additional location, this is a pharmacy in Glenhead. They were issued a warning. Um, Apparently, there was someone on social media, they had put an ad on social media, someone sent us here at the county the screenshot of that, so when our Office of Consumer Affairs investigators went to check it out, the maybe, we're guessing, maybe the, uh, the pharmacy realized that they'd done something wrong and they were actually in the, in the process of giving them back to the distributor. Because from what I understand, these were also not labeled for individual sale. So. They got the message. We hope everybody else get, gets the message that price gouging will 
you will be penalized by this, and our investigators are out there working on this. Um, you know, now to shift gears, want to talk about our seniors. Got to take care of our seniors. Um, want to remind everyone, yes, it is still safe to go about your daily routine unless you hear otherwise, but we know that our seniors and those with compromised immune systems are vulnerable, are more vulnerable to getting quite sick and getting complications from the coronavirus. The Office of the Aging under Dr. McCummings, Kyle Rose Lauder, and Deputy Director Martinez are doing a fantastic job, and we're getting daily updates from what's happening. So the senior centers that the county partners with are, at this time, are not canceling programs and activities. You may have heard that the Glen Clove, Glen Cove Senior Center has temporarily closed. That was a decision made by the city of Glen Cove out of an abundance of caution. Uh, we also know that in Great Neck, the Great Neck Chinese American, the Chinese Association, and the Persian Association, also in Great Neck, have decided to suspend, just they made this decision themselves, for, for two weeks. We ha are also hearing that some of the town programs are uh, doing some reduction, a minimal reduction, but our county partners with our senior centers, we are still open and we're still delivering the services that our seniors need, such as meals and transportation services. These centers are using hand sanitizers. They're doing deep cleaning with, with good disinfectants to make sure that we're keeping our surfaces clean for our seniors. Information has been sent to all of our centers with instructions on how to clean, on general sanitary precautions, and they all have the um, state coronavirus hotline, which I will remind you is 888-364-3065. Uh, in terms of meals, now, we want to make sure that our seniors are getting their meals. It's incredibly important, one of the most important things that we do through the Office of the Aging. Um, the Office of the, for, of the Aging currently serves about 700, 750 to 800 meals in a communal setting every day, as well as about 1,300 home-delivered meals. And this is at the various centers that we partner with. We are in the process of ordering up to 10,000 shelf-stable meals if meal participants cannot attend their normal program. We are also right now working to identify participants in our senior programs that need home-delivered meals in the event of unplanned cancellations. We're not planning them now, but in the event should our seniors need to get these meals, we're working on a, a program and procedures to make sure that they get the food that they need in case we do have to cancel some of our programs. The office is working with the center employees and with caseworkers on this expanded delivery system for additional, additional meals. Uh, we are estimating the delivery numbers would be about 2,000 meals a day if our centers are reduced or if they're closed. Um, also, the case management agencies, so these are the social services agencies that our, that our county partners with, are working at full capacity, taking precautions and prioritizing vulnerable seniors' meals and other needs. Staff, if you're listening and you don't feel well, stay home. We don't want you going to the senior centers. We don't want you going to their homes. Stay home, call your doctor if you need to, but stay home until you get better. We're taking extra precautions to protect the well-being of all our residents with a particular focus on our seniors by altering practices and deep cleaning facilities. And we're asking residents to take the extra step in to prevent shedding, uh, spreading germs. So as I said at the top of this press conference, you don't have to shake hands. It's not impolite. Don't feel, if someone gives you their hand, don't feel guilty and feel like you have to shake their hand. You can make a joke about it. You know, do the corona bump. Hugging and kissing, we all love to do that, especially us politicians, but we're taking a break from that. Um, sanitize, wash your hands after touching hard services. And uh, if you aren't feeling well, stay home. If you feel a sneeze or a cough coming on, cover your mouth so that the germs don't spread. And again, if you feel sick, Nobody wants to see you. We love you, but we don't want to see you. Please stay home. Um, happy to take any questions you might have. The two additional cases from uh, 17 yesterday, 19 today, are the two additional cases the bus drivers, I'm assuming? I'm going to let our health commissioner say that, answer that question. 
So I would not assume that. Uh, we, now that, especially now that Northwell is testing, results are coming back rapidly and we get results and sometimes it could be, you know, just a matter of we do a press conference and a result comes in a few minutes later but we report it at the next one, whatever. So uh, I wouldn't say that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Can you by any chance tell us the schools that were involved with those two bus drivers? You mentioned a lot of schools. I wasn't sure if they were all those or two drivers went to all those schools or specific ones. So, so um, the majority of those school districts were where the routes are that the bus drivers went and the bus company helped us with, you know, very clear routes when they worked, when they go, and, and from that we were able to get from the schools the lists of students that were on those buses. The schools have been notified, the, the families are being notified, most of them have been notified. And the most important thing is to prevent further spread. So the fact that those schools were closed made sure none of those students who might have been exposed, we still consider it low risk. Just being on a bus for a short while, um, we don't consider high risk, but out of an abundance of caution, we're asking those students to stay away, uh, make sure no, no disease is spread. And when we speak to the families, we counsel them, this is not a good time for a child to visit a grandparent or s somebody that could eventually be uh, exposed. But most importantly, if, if any child develops any kind of respiratory symptoms to notify health care. Uh, their health care providers so that testing can be organized and arranged. Is there a specific criteria that you guys are going with um, for closing a school? Um, it seems like uh, uh, Greg had asked me to ask you um, that uh, Westbury, um, is that School as of right now? Yeah, so, so there are specific criteria that were set down by the State Education Department just yesterday that involves when a student or teacher tests positive that they need to close for at least one day. However, every school is under its own jurisdiction to make a determination out of an abundance of caution there's a situation that they feel the best thing for their students is to close. So schools can choose to close not based on a positive case, but based on potential exposures or some other factor that they feel the safest thing is to close. And that is the school district's decision. It's not the health department's decision, not state ed's decision. They have the authority, every school district has the authority to make their own decision. We absolutely provide guidance and information to help them make what is uh, what we hope will be, you know, a, a smart decision, but it's their decision and we're supportive of anything they do out of an abundance of caution, but we, we want them to have reasonable information to make smart choices. Um, with the bus driver cases, I think it falls under the state education um, mandate that if there's a, I think it falls under that mandate, and these were high risks, so I think the, the proper decisions have been made. And I just want to Sorry. clarify, I misspoke at the top of this. Uh, Westbury is not closed today. Westbury School District is not closed. So I apologize for any confusion. Oh, okay, yeah, I was just asking um, that I, I didn't think it had closed and someone had come in contact with someone who had the virus or something along those lines. We're going to hear this all the time. Yeah. Someone will have come into contact with someone. I mean, we're going to hear this all the time. So what we're working on now is with these positives to go through their contacts, to go through everything, where, every, everywhere they've been for the previous several days and contain that as much as possible. Um, can somebody name the, the businesses? I don't think they were actually named that had these violations. So I don't want to name the businesses yet. They haven't uh, you know, fully adjudicated the violations. They were served yesterday, and they have not had an opportunity uh, to go through due process. So I don't want to name anybody just yet. How can people uh, tell, tell you about so price gouging at nassaucountyny.gov is the email address everyone should be using. Uh, we've received uh, several uh, tips, for lack of a better term, uh, since Sunday, and we received uh, about 11 or 12 overnight into this morning, and the investigators are going out uh, later this morning and this afternoon to investigate. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, we have been watching Nassau County Executive Laura Curran update the public on the coronavirus outbreak. There are now 19 people who have tested positive for the virus on Long Island, and two of those are school bus drivers who combined transport approximately 80 students. Now, most of those families have been contacted. 72 residents are now in mandatory quarantine and at least another 70 in voluntary quarantine. This has prompted the closure of several schools. Officials say they are focused on containing this spread in order to protect senior citizens and those with compromised immune systems. NASA County officials also say they are cracking down on price gouging. Several unfair trade violations have now been issued to multiple businesses and those fines up to $5,000. And once again, the overall numbers in New York State now seeing 148 cases. And we have more information on our website, cbsnewyork.com. Right now, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back right here on CBSN New York.